children that never had asthma have now got asthma. My youngest daughter's just been recently diagnosed with anxiety. She's only 12. 12. Oh. My eldest, when this really kicked off, she wanted to leave home and move in with her father because she didn't feel safe living here. And as a mum, that's horrible, isn't it? That breaks my heart. So the main issue with me um, is myself and my daughter and she's wheelchair bound. It's the lifts. At least once a week you're getting a breakdown. If both lifts are out, I would have to physically drag my daughter who's in the chair with a school bag and all the whatever extra stuff she's got on and sort of drag her up those flights of stairs. I live in pain most days but you kind of push it to the back of your head because you've got stuff to do, you've got a kid to raise. So. As a parent you want to protect them as much as you can. And if I can't even ensure that she can even get to her property, that's heartbreaking. It took for me to get a lot to know of my children yeah. for them to fix it. And then I overheard when they thought I couldn't, they couldn't, I couldn't hear them. I overheard the workman saying if it was a fire, I'll be dead. And then on top of that, just, was it last week or 10 days ago, my son got locked in the bedroom. We have been called scum. Mold everywhere. Lights were dripping in water. Electric sockets were exploding. My son burnt in his hands. The water was like, this much, it was just pouring, pouring. We couldn't change the buckets fast enough. It left us completely in the dark. I got scared. I got really scared because I know that Grenfell literally happened a few years ago now. The people that were managing the building that we live in do not care about us. They knew about it and they weren't doing anything about it. They didn't bring anyone in to investigate. They didn't bring anyone in to do a fire risk assessment. We just had to act. It was late last year and I found uh, Siobhan had put a photo up with a description stating this is where we live and the feedback from that was immense. I realised that everyone else was actually going through something in their properties as well. Some people from the Labour Party organising team reached out to us. Working with the Labour Party pretty much just burnt a fire under us to keep on fighting. They really, really helped us to band together as a community and organise organise meetings. They helped us to form a residence association. They did a power training on community organising so that we knew how to um, actually ask for what we want. We've now all come together and we're trying to fight because we're all in the same boat. It's affecting all of us in one way or another. It's amazing how much we've all come together. We have power, we can make a change. Collectively fighting, we can definitely do this. As individuals, you know what, they'll, they'll, they'll sweep us under the carpet, they'll keep us quiet. We have started a conversation that's actually bigger than us and bigger than Clyde House. It's not just our block, it is a UK thing with every single housing trust that you can actually think of. We're going to do this, we're going to fight, we're going to win, fact. And we're, hopefully with this it helps other people around the country, around, around the city and around the country. That's our goal, because knowing how can we be brushed on the carpet ever again. It won't happen, I won't allow it. We won't allow it. What I've seen is utterly shocking. But the residents have come together in adversity with the help and support of Labour's community organising unit to make sure their voice is heard. At the next general election, whenever it comes, an absolutely central policy will be that of housing. We will regulate the private rented sector, build council housing, and we'll make sure that the scandal of Clyde House here in Wandsworth, which could happen anywhere, is not repeated and that housing associations are held to account.